so hey guys uh, welcome to this new nibosh pocket series video where we will be discussing all the important questions and the topics which might be useful for you guys to pass the nibosh exam so for nibosh igc we are today going to discuss about a very important topic which is what are the key indicators which you can use to monitor uh, the health and safety culture in an organization so First and foremost, this video will be going to be a little lengthy and uh, maybe boring because uh, there are some points uh, which are explained in this video. But for exam preparation, what I recommend you guys is just try to remember the first important points which you have to uh, write in the exam and the rest you can understand the topic and you can write it from your side. And to remember the key points, you have to develop your own uh, code words so here I will give an example like uh, if I wanted to remember some key points like uh, absenteeism sickness key performance indicators that is KPI so how I used to uh, remember all these terms during my Nibosh and CSP exams are like uh, I will remember the term uh, ASK for this particular question okay so I, I just used to remember the ASK so what is ASK absenteeism A uh, S is for uh, sickness rate and K is for KPI, key performance indicator. So like that you can uh, develop your own uh, codes which will be useful for you to remember these kinds of terms. So uh, first we will be going to discuss about the indicators which are used to assess safety culture. So friends, uh, initially if we say it's quite difficult to assess it directly because there is no uh, one single feature or item that can be measured uh, safety culture is a partly defined as how people think and feel their attitudes their beliefs and their priorities so there are some uh, indicators which we can use to assess the safety culture they are so the very first uh, important indicator is compliance with safety rules in an organization with a positive safety culture the majority of workers want to work safely so they comply all the safety rules and procedures laid down by the organization formal or informal safety inspections or audits usually says that there is a high level of compliance the safety culture has influenced workers' behavior in a positive way. But where there is a negative safety culture, the reverse is usually true. Workers do not follow the rules, either because they do not know what they are, or because they know the rules, but they are not. Uh, they do not want to follow them. Workers are free to break the rules because of poor super vision and with the confidence that they will not be punished for breaking the rules now the second indicator is the staff turnover an organization with a positive safety culture is often a good place to work mm -hmm. workers feel safe the morale is good the workers are available and workers are consulted about their working condition as a result workers stay longer so low staff turnover may indicate a good safety culture now let us see the another indicator which is sickness rate a lot of ill health is caused or made worse by work for example in many countries a huge number of working days are lost because of back pain and a significant proportion of this back pain or this reason of this back pain have been caused or made worse by the work that individuals are doing so in a way we can say that sickness rates are uh, similar like accident rates and it can be used as an indicator for safety culture let us see another indicator which is absenteeism a high level of worker absenteeism indicates that workers are neither not not able or not willing to come to work 
if they are not able this might indicate that they are suffering ill health caused or worsened by work if they are not willing it indicates that they are withholding their labor for some reason this is usually caused by poor workforce morale which in turn can sometimes be linked to poor safety culture so the next indicator is accidents accident records can be used to work out how many accidents are happening as a rate the accident rate for a particular organization can be compared organization's performance in previous years which will indicate whether the accident rate is increasing or decreasing a decreasing rate might be seen as an indicator of a positive safety culture and vice versa for the negative safety culture rate for other organizations that do the same work or the industry average this is the process of benchmarking so talking about this an accident rate that is higher than the and uh, other companies rate might be seen as an indicator of a negative safety culture and with a positive safety culture much time and effort will go into investigating accidents writing investigation reports and introducing follow up actions to prevent a recurrence but with a negative safety culture superficial accident investigations are carried out reports reports are of poor quality follow up action is either not taken or is ineffective now here is a bonus tip for you friends whenever you write about the accidents you have to give a case study like you can mention any organization or you can mention about the decrease in the rate of accidents in an organization with some uh, statistics you can get the statistics from uh, hse uk uh, gov site which is in which you can see some case studies and some examples so this site will be very useful you can give the term accidents in the search bar of this site and you can get uh, some statistics uh, what is happening in uk and in other european site okay So friends let us see uh, the another factor which is the influence of peers how uh, the friendships or the how the other colleagues uh, how they can uh, influence right so when people are uh, just together into groups they interact right some individuals will have a lot of influence over the group others will have little influence so in this way a hierarchy develops within the group certain ways of behaving will become the norm which will often be established by the most influential members of the group a person wishing to become a member of the group will have to comply with the group norms this pressure to comply with the group norms is peer group pressure so this is kind of very uh, common in most of the companies where uh, you have to choose your allies right you have to choose the group and if one group member is not uh, like if the group is collectively uh, deciding on the you know like uh, what we say uh, decided to stick on to not following the safety rules then other members are also bound to follow the rule so this is what uh, peer group pressure so in a way uh, it is like uh, friends the guy is really uh, from inside he wanted to follow the safety rules of the organization where you are working but it is the pressure of the group which uh, keeps him aside from following up the rules right so this is particularly a very uh, very dangerous uh, atmosphere this kind of atmosphere i must say so uh, let us get into our story like uh, the peer group pressure uh, is an important factor to take into account when thinking about safety related behavior if a group is already working safely safely then peer group pressure will keep most people in that group in line but if the group is working unsafely then peer group pressure will tend to force more and more workers to behave unsafely in an attempt to fit in with group norms so uh, as i mentioned before even though workers may know that what they are doing is wrong and may want to do it the right way the pressure to comply with the social group overcomes their personal apprehensions 
the way to deal with the problem is usually to tackle the influential people within the group who are the ones responsible for establishing group behavior if their behavior can be changed then everyone else will change as well this might be done by training education involvement in safety related projects etc one very successful tactic is to give them increased responsibility ultimately if the influential members will not change their behavior then they may have to be moved into other work groups where they may have less influence or they may have to be disciplined using the normal disciplinary process now we will be seeing the last uh, indicator which is complaints about working conditions there is an obvious link between safety culture and the number and the type of complaints made by work uh, to management an organization with positive culture may actively encourage complaints but few serious ones will be made an organization with a negative safety culture may actively discourage workers from complaining and many of the complaints made will be legitimate and serious ones so friends uh, i hope that these uh, points are very very clear to you and they are very legible to write for the exam so i hope uh, and i would like to wish you a good luck uh, to all of you who are preparing for this exams and uh, don't forget to share with your other colleagues who are preparing for the nibosh and stay in touch with us for nibosh and health and safety updates on a, on your very uh, dear channel the safety